Have you heard the term wholesaling in real estate and you kind of wonder what is that? Like what's wholesaling all about? I was actually in my in my studio here today and I was doing some recordings and I said, you know what? I'm going to answer that question because people ask that question a lot. What is wholesaling and like, should I do it? Wholesaling very simply is this. It's when you find a piece of property, you find a house or a piece of property or it could even be a commercial building and you put that property under contract. So you sign that you're going to buy that contract. And you have a special contract that in that contract, it clearly states that you can sell that contract to another buyer, okay, and collect a fee for that. And what the real life example is this, I'll tell you, Amber and I stumbled onto it by accident, literally by accident. Probably over a decade ago, we bought a house in a neighborhood that we did a lot of houses in. We bought this house, we put it under contract, and literally, I got a phone call before I closed, so like maybe three days after I went under contract, and it was called an official contract, it went through the attorney approval clause, and my attorney called and said, hey, attorney friend of mine just called, they heard you put this property under contract and they'd like to buy the house from you. And I said, I don't own it yet. And they said, yeah, no, they wanna buy the contract, they wanna give you $10,000 over what you paid for the house. Now, this particular couple had a lot of rentals in that neighborhood, and this was a house they wanted to get, but they didn't see it before I saw it. So I went under contract with it. It was, it was on the public MLS. I went under contract, and they wanted to buy that from me for $10,000. Well, I ended up negotiating and sell it for $12,000, but I was laughing as I went to the bank because I made $12,000 for finding a house. Now, here was a dumb bonehead move on my part. I didn't do any other wholesales for a few years. And that was dumb. I thought, I thought to myself, well, I don't want to just do, I feel like I use car sales when I'm finding houses and selling them. Why do I want to do that? What I didn't realize was that I was turning away deals that I was finding that were not in my buy box. I had a certain buy box I was sticking to. I'd caution you, don't just have one buy box that you stick to because there's a lot of opportunity out there right now. So if any house that was out of our buy box, I would say, no, thank you. That's not in my neighborhood. That's not where I want to buy. That's too cheap. That's too expensive. That's too risky. Whatever it might be, I had an excuse for houses that were not in my perfect little buy box. Here's what people fail to realize. Other people like those houses. There are other people that specialize in inner city, specialize in expensive houses, specialize in cheap housing, specialize in all different types of things that I wasn't specializing in. So I turned around and said to myself, wait a minute, if they want to buy those houses, then I'm going to sell those to them. So we would market and we find those houses. Once we find those houses, we then sell that house. We sell the contract to somebody else. And here's how it works as I wrap this up. If you had a house, let's just say you had a house that you wanted to sell and you, you want to sell it for $70,000. And I come along and say, listen, I'll give you $70,000 in cash for that house. I sign a contract and I say, look it, I may take title or one of my partners or one of my students may take title of the house or I may have somebody else come in and take it off my hands. But either way, I'll get this house sold. You'll have your $70,000 in the next three weeks or whatever the date is. Now I go to my network of people and I find someone willing to pay me 80, 85,000 or even $90,000 for that same piece of property. Why would they do that? Because it makes sense for them too. They run the numbers and say, look at, I could flip this house at 85,000, let's just say 85,000. I could, I could buy it for $85,000 and I could flip it and make $50,000. So they take on all the risk, all the headache, right? All the stuff, because that's what it is when you flip a house, there's, there's risk and, and work on that. And about six months to get their money by the time it's all said and done. And I can get $15,000 for finding that deal without bringing any of my own money to the table. Because at the closing table, the end buyer that's going to pay eighty-five, dollars they bring the $85,000, right? You bring your house. If I'm in the middle, right, I get the difference. So $70,000 goes through to you. And out of the eighty-five, dollars that leaves $15,000 that goes to the wholesaler. It's a great way to make additional income in real estate investing. It's not as easy as a lot of people want you to think, but it's very lucrative. We did about 80 deals like that last year, totaling well over $1 million. Some of our wholesale spreads <clears throat> go as high as 75. We have one for $78,000. We have several for 20, 30, $40,000. So there's a lot of money to be made. Our average wholesale split right now is around $17,000. So do you want to do it? It's up to you. If you want to do it, it's a great way to make an income. You just have to decide what you want to focus on when you're first getting started. Do you want to wholesale? Do you want to flip? Do you want to do long-term rentals? Do you want to do short-term rentals? Those are the four areas we specialize in. But I'll tell you, if you can master wholesaling and just be a great deal maker, it's a great way to make a ridiculous income for just transferring some paper around. So in case you wonder what wholesaling was, I hope that helps.